Hey there, it's Andy Lockwood, and I'm back with another little frequently asked question for FACUS Friday. Which extracurricular activities make the biggest impact on your college applications? This is a great question because I think a, a lot of uh, kids and parents and, frankly, guidance counselors don't really understand that what you're doing when you apply to college is you're marketing yourself. You're trying to stand out. I think they get that, but what they don't really get is what that means. So the way I think about extracurricular activities and the entire uh, college application in totality is what you're really doing when you apply to college is answering a question that's actually not on the common application. So it's the invisible question on the common application that says in some in substance, why should we take you compared to all these other kids, tens of thousands, maybe more than a hundred thousand per college, if you're depending on what colleges you're applying to, why take you, why should we choose you out of a crowd compared to everyone else who kind of looks the same as you do on paper? So one of the areas that matters the most in terms of communicating your difference and why you should be picked out of a crowd is your list of extracurricular activities. So what a lot of kids do, first of all, is they don't really think about this stuff until they have their big you know, college meeting in 11th grade with their guidance counselor. And that's when they may realize, may dawn on them at that time that that's when they should have been uh, looking at strategic extracurriculars or, or maybe it's too late. Because when you're applying to college, when, when you're marketing yourself to college, what you're doing is you're summing up your entire body of work from ninth grade forward. If you had that meeting with your guidance counselor in 11th grade, you know, it's too late. So there's two types of extracurricular activities that I want to talk to you about today the ones that make a difference and, and the ones that don't. Basically, the categories are typical versus atypical. So what do I mean? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I use the acronym CASA, C-A-S-A, -S -A, consistent atypical student activities. So a typical activity is being in a club, uh, being a national honor society, those types of things. Atypical is I formed my own club. And I formed my own activity. To, I took the initiative. It wasn't necessarily sanctioned by the school, but that's okay too. I wrote a book. I mean, I like to write, but I actually put a book together of poems. Um, it's one thing to be a member of a club. It's another thing to be a leader. You know, an officer. That's an obvious one. It's one thing to play a sport. It's another thing to be a captain or all league, you know, or the equivalent for for a musician and all that. It's, it, if your whole application is comprised only of the same stuff that everyone else does, then there's no way, logically speaking, that you can stand out. But if you can, early enough on in, the, in your high school career, if you can pick one or two things that you're doing that might be typical and plus it or accentuate it so that it becomes something more than just typical because you're going deeper, then that's going to help you stand out. And it's also, more importantly, in my opinion, going to be very valuable to you in terms of your personal growth and deepening your, your knowledge. So, for example, uh, we had clients who years ago who were very into robotics, but their grades and their scores you know, were, were pretty good, but they weren't necessarily stand out. They weren't valedictorians, but they were gunning for an elite uh, Ivy League college that, that they and their mom had set their sights on. So ultimately, instead of just being involved with on the robotics team, they created the opportunity to teach younger kids from the middle school about robotics and encourage them to participate. And then, in effect, they created a, a sort of a farm system to go up to the high school. That was completely on their own. They, they took this initiative. They did something that they were interested in uh, to, to just themselves organically, and they accentuated it by creating this, this program. And you know what? Uh, that ended up getting featured in the local news in print, and then it was featured in the local uh, TV, cable news, and we shamelessly packaged uh, those bits of standout information up to their Ivy League school that they applied early decision to, and they both got in as engineering students, which is super competitive at every school, plus and Ivy League school. So that was pretty awesome. And the mom attributes, you know, that type of advice that they implemented from us 
uh, to be the deciding factor. I don't know if it is or it isn't, but the point is that's the difference between atypical and typical. So you want to focus on consistent, not just at the last minute, not just in 11th grade when you realize, oh, my God, I haven't done anything yet. Uh, or your mom is like, you know, geez, you have to do something. I'm, re I'm reading about all these extracurricular activities that these kids are doing to get into Harvard. So consistent means you start earlier than 11th grade, you know, 10th or preferably even 9th grade to expand your repertoire and fill it with, you know, maybe a handful, three or four types of activities that the, the typical average kid doesn't do. So think CASA, consistent, atypical student activities when you're trying to evaluate how to spend your time. That's hard to do. If you appreciate these these tips, please subscribe, whatever platform you're watching this on, because we're giving more and more of these out. If you have a specific question that you want answered, please post it here, and uh, chances are that we will answer it if it pertains not just to you and very specific, your, uh, specifically about your situation, but to everyone who could be watching this. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you soon.